Hola. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hi, Patricia, how are you? How was your weekend? Hi, fine, teacher. That's nice. And what about your weekend? Did you have a good weekend? Yes. I stay in my house. I stay at home. You rest or watch TV or what did you do? Yes. Okay, that's nice. So uh, thank you everybody for being here on time. I hope that you have had a wonderful weekend and a good Monday. So uh, we're going to start the class. The previous one on Friday, we were practicing on how to order food, right? Let me share my screen so that you can uh, refresh. Okay, so we practiced uh, this conversation, you remember? Uh, this one. Or you don't? Yeah, we practiced this in the last session. Uh -huh. And uh, yes, in this one, we basically were practicing the same thing, how to uh, make requests. In this case, requesting a meal, right? Ordering a meal, which is a kind of request. So um, I included this, as I told you in the previous class, this um, uh, contains most of the most uh, used or commonly used modal verbs in English and a, a short explanation about all of them. We have been working with can, could, uh, may um, and would. So, but here we have a couple more. So for example, will, you can use will to express willingness, certain predictions or promise. Okay, those are the, uh, in the situations that you can use will. About would, would is, can be used as a, for request, also for invitation or for making arrangements. May um, and might, they are similar. So might is a permission or a future possibility. It might, it's a present or a future possibility. And then we have can, which we were discussing that can be used for ability or request. Then we have a could. Could is for past ability, suggestion, and future possibility. So you see, it's kind of the, not, it's not simply that we said, ah, could is the past of can. Mm, it's uh, completely different. Uh, yes, in some cases we can see it as that, but it, it has also other usages. Um, about must, that is a modal uh, verb that you can use to express necessity or obligation. Then out to is a modal auxiliary that is like, um, it uh, express obligation, but in a, in a moral sense, like what's right or correct, okay? Uh, shall is after, uh, to offer or suggestion. And then should for advice or uncertain prediction. So that's basically a summary of the most common modal auxiliaries. Uh, is there any question? Mm. Have you seen them before? I um, would like sure. to know. Uh, some example about how to, please. How to? Okay, how to, it's um, 
one example could be, as this is a modal auxiliary or a modal verb that is like um, to suggest or, but in um, like in a, what you want, you want to express what's correct or what is right. For example, you ought to obey your parents. Okay, so that is like a moral obligation that you have, or you could say you ought to help your parents uh, when they need it, right? Mm -hmm. Some uh, some people doesn't do it, but it's like a moral obligation that we have with our parents, right? Any uh, is that better now, Anna Silvia? Oh, we can, uh, it's, it's like, um, es como decir deberías, pero se parece a should. Uh, pero should es como damos un consejo y como una sugerencia. El ought to es como un consejo o una sugerencia, pero orientado a un deber moral. Es como decirle, tú debes de honrar a tus papás, tú debes ayudarles uh, sin que ellos te lo pidan, porque como hijo es tu deber moral, ¿verdad? Entonces, en ese, el, el out to se usa más cuando es una, queremos expresar un deber o una obligación moral. Uh -huh. Any other question? Can you give an example of show? Should. Should. Okay, with should, uh, it's like, um, okay, should siempre es para hacer una sugerencia o un eh, consejo. No, no. Eh, eh, should. Eh, show. No, es eh, ah, que show. Solo para. show. Show. Uh -huh. It's to offer or suggestion. So, es como ofrecer algo o preguntar eh, o sugerir, por ejemplo, uh, digamos, um, uh, lo invitan a una fiesta, ¿verdad? Y le dicen, no, no traigas nada, uh, pero sería como, shall I bring some drinks? ¿Podría o debería de llevar algunas bebidas? So you offer using shop. Any other question? This one, these two, I, I'm sure that you have seen them before. May and might. Ya los han visto antes, el may y el might. Si se fijan los dos, dice future possibility. Y might también es para future possibility. Ambos se usan para una posibilidad en el futuro. Pero la diferencia es que si usted usa may, le está dando la idea al receptor del mensaje de que esto es, tiene un mayor grado de probabilidad de que suceda. Pues es como una posibilidad en el futuro. Le dicen, eh, ¿a, qué horas, eh, ¿a qué horas podrías estar mañana en la cena? Hay una cena, le han invitado, pero usted no está seguro de si podría llegar a... Um, a las siete, ¿verdad? Pero usted dice, I, um, I might be there at seven. I might, con este, might be there at seven. Entonces, yo entiendo, si usted me está diciendo con esta futura posibilidad usando might, que no está muy seguro de poder llegar a las siete. Pero si usted me dice, I may be there at seven. Entonces, digo, ah, ok, entonces, calcula que sí de verdad puede estar ahí, es, es más fuerte. La posibilidad es más seguro que ocurra con may que con might. Esa es la diferencia de los dos. Uh, any other question?
No. And uh, most. Uh, must as a for necessity or obligation. Uh, so you say uh, uh, an obligation, like for example, to your, you must be on time or you must clock in on time for your job, right? Es una obligation que usted tiene que uh, ponchar en el reloj a tiempo cuando llega a su trabajo, ¿verdad? You must be on time. Esa es una obligación. No es una sugerencia, es una obligación la que se expresa cuando usamos el modal verb must. Uh -huh. And the all modal verbs have the same structure. Yes, it is the same. Siempre as este va el sujeto, eh, luego el modal verb y luego el verbo que le sigue va a ir en presente simple sin alteraciones. Todos obedecen la misma regla. No se le pone nada, tampoco se pone tú antes del verbo que se va a ocupar después del modal. Inmediatamente después del modal va el verbo o la acción sin tú, sin ese, sin ed, el verbo en forma simple, sin conjugarse. En todos los casos de los modals aplica lo mismo. Any other question? Any other question about the models? No, thanks. Okay, if there are no more questions about models, we're going to continue here. So let me share the video that is on the platform about these models. I guess we have one. Just let me get ready. Uh, I didn't share what I wanted. One second. Okay, here we are in the platform. And as you can see in this part of the section, we are going to study the modal verbs would and will for request. Let's watch the video together. And then you tell me if you have any additional questions or if you want for us to create more samples. Nice to have you back in class. Please take notes on would and will. Try to understand how they are being used. After the explanation, we have some questions for you. Please answer them on our discussion box. Modal verbs would and will for requests. What would you like? I'd like the lamb kebabs. I'll have a small salad. What kind of dressing would you like? I'd like blue cheese, please. I'll have vinaigrette. <laughs> What would you like to drink? I'd like an iced tea. I'll have coffee. Would you like anything else? Yes, please. I'd like some water. No, thank you. That'll be all. Contractions. I'll equals I will. I'd equals I would. We presented would and will in a conversation and then on a previous chart. But now let's work on them. Using would to make requests. Would is used when we make requests in English. It is a more polite way to make your requests to someone, especially when you're not familiar with. We can use would directly at the beginning of the question. Would plus subject plus like plus infinitive verb plus complement Plus question mark. Example, would you like to drink tea? Or we can use it with a WH question word. WH question word plus would plus subject plus like plus infinitive verb plus complement plus question mark. Example, what would you like to eat for dessert? Also, in this opportunity, we're using would to answer questions. What would you like to drink? I would like a soft drink. Or, I'd like a soft drink. Did you notice the position of wood in the answer? That's right, it goes exactly after the subject. How to answer using wood? Subject plus wood 
plus like plus compliment. Now let's pretend we're in a restaurant and you are the waiter. This is my response. I want you to think on the question. I like apple pie. I like coffee. Now it's my turn to ask you. Please respond using wood. What would you like to eat? What would you like to have? Ice cream or chocolate cake? Okay, questions about the video? <clears throat> no questions? No questions. Okay, when, when, I got one. Uh -huh. um, always we want to use uh, wood at the beginning of the sentence, but in a in equation. Uh, well, the structure for a question uh, is first if you're making a um um. Well, it depends because if you ask a yes no question, yes, um, you use wood at the beginning. Mm -hmm. okay. For example, uh -huh, I can ask you a yes no question using wood. Uh, so that would be at the beginning. Would you like? So I start with wood. Would you like mm -hmm. soda? <clears throat> okay. As in the example, would you like anything else? Uh-huh, so you answer no, thank you, or yes, please. Mm -hmm. But if I ask you what, or a, a WH question is going to be at the beginning, if I am asking for information, like for example, what would you like to drink? So mm -hmm. I am not, um, if you want this to is know. Not, I want to know, uh-huh, what would you like to, to drink? And there mm -hmm. are many options, but if I give you the options for just for you to say <clears> yes <throat> or no, uh, that would start with the auxiliary would. Would you like soda? Yes, no. Would you like coffee? Yes or no. But if mm -hmm. I want the information to come from you, I'm mm -hmm. going to use a WH question. So the WH word is going to be before the auxiliary would. Okay. Uh huh. Eduardo? Maybe. Uh -huh. With the practice, we're going to learn more. Uh, well, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank uh, you. In, with wool, uh, the, the auxiliary is like, and with will, the auxiliary is half. Mm. That, uh, for example, eso si varía con, con todos los modal verbs. Uh, eh, depende, sí, o sea, vaya, pongamos que ahorita estamos usando would para, para preguntar, para ofrecer, para hacer un ofrecimiento, ¿verdad? Entonces, para ofrecer algo, usamos would, pero para contestar, para yo decir qué es lo que quiero, puedo contestar usando would o puedo contestar usando will. Tengo las dos opciones, pero solamente cuando estoy respondiendo. Pero mmm, para, para preguntar es mmm, mejor hacerlo con Will, porque sí puedes preguntar um, con Will, pero no es como común. Uh -huh. Entonces, por eso eh, eh, para preguntar, para invitar, para hacer un request, se usa would en la pregunta. Y como le comentaba a Vicente, puede ser una yes no question. Eh, si es yes no question, entonces empezamos con el auxiliar, con would. Uh -huh. Es como decirle, uh, would you like to go to a party? Esa es una yes no question. Would you like to go to a party tonight? So you say, yes, I, I'd love to, or no, I'm sorry, I am tired. So you answer yes or no. Pero si yo le pregunto, ¿qué te gustaría hacer esta noche? What, o, o dónde te gustaría ir? Para, uh, para salir del what, puede ser where también. ¿A dónde te gustaría ir? 
Where would you like, would you like to, go? to go? Where would you like to go tonight? Uh -huh. Entonces ya ahí usted me da la información. I would like to go to a cafe, an outdoor cafe, or I would like to have dinner in a fancy restaurant. <laughs> Or, or you decide, oh, I wouldn't like to go out. I just want to stay home. So to see better. a movie. To see a movie. Uh -huh. So, pero okay. para contestar, eh, si contestamos con would, como usted dice acá, la diferencia es que con would, aquí, si contesto, no sé si ahora sí le voy a responder bien su pregunta, Eduardo, porque en la respuesta estamos viendo estas contracciones, ¿verdad? I'd like y I'll have. La diferencia acá es que esta contracción es la de I would. Uh -huh. Y esta es la de I will. I will. Ajá. Y cuando digo I would, uso like. Ok. Me I gustaría, like. ajá, I would like the fish and rice. Y es una manera como más corte de responder cuando le preguntan qué te gustaría. What would you like? Ah, I would like the fish and rice. Me gustaría el pescado y arroz. Pero el will es, es acuérdense que el will también es un auxiliar que es para decisiones espontáneas. Entonces como que, ah, me decidí por una ensalada pequeña. I will have a small salad. Entonces, I will have. Ya me decidí, esto quiero. Ajá, quiero una ensalada pequeña. I'll have a small salad. Both are correct. Pero sí, no es como que se pueda. I would have. A, um, yes, I would have a small salad. You can also say that, but it's not really common. Mm -hmm. Esa era la pregunta, Eduardo. Eh, sí, sí, sí. Ok, is there any other? No, thanks. Okay. All right. So uh, let's practice. Uh, let's see. We have this exercise in which you have to complete. For example, here, the first thing is a conversation between a server, server and a customer. And customer. So we have to complete. The first one is the question. So we know that the for, for the question, we are going to use. Would. Would. So here it would be what? What would, would you, you like, like to order? Order. And here okay. the answer is with have. So what I'll is have. I'll uh -huh, I'll, I'll have, have the spicy, spicy chicken. chicken. Now, mm -hmm. what am I missing in the second question? Good. Would you like uh -huh. rice or potato? Would you like would you like rice? Rice on of or potatoes. potatoes. Uh huh. Would. <coughs> the answer. I'll. I'd. Uh huh. I'd. I'd. With the I'd. I'd, uh, I'd, I'd like. Like rice, please. Uh huh. Sí, porque fíjense otra cosa que uh, me va si si uso will con like. Sería como decir, me va a gustar, <ríe> me va a gustar un arroz, por favor. Mm. Entonces, no tiene sentido usar will con like. Es como uh -huh. me gustaría. Uh, me gustaría para eso arroz, es el would. Uh -huh. Would mm. is, is better. Uh -huh. would. Entonces, uh -huh. por eso, acuérdense, si van a contestar con would, el, seguimos like. Si va a contestar con will, el verbo que sigue es have. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Pero no podemos okay. poner will con like. Uh -huh. ah, uh -huh. Porque sí I sonaría have, raro. I would like. Ajá, uh -huh, exacto. Okay. Eh, les voy a dejar que sigan respondiendo la conversación, completando así como lo hicimos hasta la segunda interacción del customer. Customer. Uh -huh. Uh, Daniel, that, do you have Daniel any question? Have question? Uh huh. That's Hi, Daniel. Uh, hi, hi. It's just from the sound because I'm riding on a, on a bike. Listen. Oh, okay. Pregunta, siempre, siempre me escucha. 
Yes, but far, ¿Pero? far away, but yes. <risa> okay. Tengo una pregunta. Siempre es que hace la parte contractada de cuando se dice I would like, I would like, siempre se tiene que poner eh, la parte contraída. Uh, yes, in a speaking is better to use contraction. I'd like, I'll have. Mm -hmm. okay, y also, you. You're welcome. Also here for the exercise, you can use contractions. But yes, we don't use contraction in formal emails, remember. No contractions for formal writing, formal emails, letters, etc. But here in the speaking and for the exercise, of course, you can do it. Ready, finished? Yes. Yes, you finished. Okay, let me continue sharing here so that we can check the answers and be able to see the whole conversation. Okay, so this is where we stop. I'd like rice, please. Um, and the server replies, uh, okay, and what am I missing here? Would you like anything to drink? Excellent, would you like anything to drink? Uh-huh, Eduardo, next, please. I will just have a glass of water. I would or will? Will. Excellent. Will. I'll. Uh huh. Excellent. Thank you so much. I'll just have a glass of water. Let's see. Maria del Carmen, continue. Would you like anything else? Excellent. That is correct. Would you like anything else? Rafael Cruz, continue. No, I that. Good. Uh, Bet to from the things. Uh huh. That'll be all for now. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, let's see. Diana Stephanie. Dina? Ana Silvia? Yes. 
ويش انا سيلفيا ها ويش انا سيلفيا اه اه يس يو ذا فلورست here this part would you dessert dessert excellent would you like dessert excellent evening Vicente uh, yes I like ice cream excellent yes I like ice cream very good uh, Francisco Daniel uh, yes, I will like ice cream or flavor. What flavor? Uh, what flavor will you like? Yes, excellent. What flavor would you like? Would you like? And the last uh, one, Ruth. I. Now you're. Uh huh. I'll. Okay. Good. Strawberry. Thank you so much. <laughs> the strawberry, please. Okay, so mm -hmm. that was pretty easy. But also we have a listening exercise. Okay, this is the listening exercise that we are going to complete. Okay, it says, let's order. Uh, we're going to listen to Rex and Hannah order in a restaurant. And you have to write here, what did each of them order? So you have to complete their check here. Okay, complete the order. And then we are going to check. Remember that it doesn't matter if you have not printed the material, you can work in your notebook, okay? Ready? <clears throat> yes. Okay, I'm going to play the audio and try to complete what each of them order. Page 90, exercise nine, listening. Let's order. Part A, listen to Rex and Hannah order in a restaurant. What did each of them order? Fill in their check. Hi, may I take your order? Yes. I'll have a cup of coffee. Cream and sugar? Oh, yes, please. And you? I'd like a chicken sandwich. And I'll have some chips. Oh, you call them french fries here, right? I'll have some french fries, please. All right. One coffee with cream and sugar and a chicken sandwich with french fries. Uh, anything else? Yes. I'd like an iced tea, please. One iced tea. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. What kind of desserts do you have? Well, we have pie, cake, ice cream, chocolate mousse. Ooh, what kind of pie do you have? I think today we have apple, cherry, lemon. Hmm, I think I'll have a piece of apple pie with my coffee. How about you, Hannah? Oh, maybe I'll have a piece later. Or I'll have some of yours. <laughs> <laughs> then it's one coffee, one apple pie, one chicken sandwich, an order of french fries, and an iced tea, right? Yes, thank you. Thanks. All right, did you complete it or do you want to listen again? Uh, please again, teacher. Okay. Sorry. No, thank no you. worry, that's fine. They, they speak too fast and we need to write. <laughs> Right now with the right. with yeah, with a, the ability are, of a waitress. <laughs> we are taking not. Yes, okay. I'm going to play it once again. Thank you. Page 90, exercise 9. Listening. Let's order. Part A. Listen to Rex and Hannah order in a restaurant. What did each of them order? Fill in their check. Hi, may I take your order? Yes, I'll have a cup of coffee. Cream and sugar? Oh, yes, please. And you? I'd like a chicken sandwich. And I'll have some chips. Oh, you call them french fries here, right? I'll have some french fries, please. All right, one coffee with cream and sugar and a chicken sandwich with french fries. Uh, anything else? Yes, I'd like an iced tea, please. One iced tea. Thank you. 
Oh, wait a minute. What kind of desserts do you have? Well, we have pie, cake, ice cream, chocolate mousse. Ooh, what kind of pie do you have? I think today we have apple, cherry, lemon. Hmm, I think I'll have a piece of apple pie with my coffee. How about you, Hannah? Oh, maybe I'll have a piece later. Or I'll have some of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Then it's one coffee, one apple pie, one chicken sandwich, an order of french fries, and an iced tea, right? Yes, thank you. Thanks. Now we are ready. <laughs> You're ready. Okay, let's check. Oh, what did they order then, Vicente? Coffee. Re Rex says uh, he wants a cup of coffee with oh. cream, sugar, and Ice apple pie. I see apple pie. Yes, coffee with cream and sugar and a piece of apple pie. Right. Good. A volunteer to say what Hannah ordered? French fries, chicken sandwich, iced tea. Okay, let us check. Yes, a chicken, a chicken sandwich, french fries, and iced tea. And that's it. Excellent. Very well done. So we make... Thank you. Oh, yeah, but before we continue, oh my God, it's almost 20 minutes to uh, finish the class. So I'm going to check attendance and, and then we're going to continue with the topic. So before I forget, I'm going to stop sharing. And uh, remember to turn on your cameras and say present when you hear your names. So... <clears throat> We can complete this now. Ada Marilu. Ada Marilu. Is not present. Alejandra Beatriz. Alejandra Beatriz. Ana Ivania. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana Silvia Rodríguez de Flores. Present. Thank you. Ana Silvia Rodríguez de Funes. Ana Silvia de Funes. Ana Yancy Martinez. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Cristina del Carmen. Present. Thank you. Daniel Alejandro. Present teacher. Thank you. Diana Stephanie. Present. Okay, thank you. Dina Esmeralda. Present. Thank you. Eduardo José. Thank you. Evelyn Susana. Thank you. Francisco Daniel. Present. Thank you. Iris Concepción. Present teacher. Thank you. María del Carmen. Present teacher. Thank you. Nancy Carolina. Patricia Maris. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Cruz. Present teacher. Thank you. Rosa Hilda. Rosa Hilda. Ruth Elizabeth. Present. Thank you. Sandra Noemi. Vicente Israel. Here, teacher. Thank you. Jessica Rosibel. Jessica Rosibel. Oh, 
Okay. Well, we're going to continue with the reading exercise that we have. So let me uh, share uh, here because we can make this one bigger. Okay. The reading says, this is the topic, to tip or not to tip. Okay, we're going to read. Yeah, okay. Okay, let's see, to tip or not to tip. Uh, volunteer to read the first part of the paragraph until this period where it's a service. Anna Silvia, thank you so much. Thank you, okay, you will continue. Let's start Anna Silvia and then we send the second paragraph. The word tip comes from an old English word that means to do. It was a noun a verb. People in the US usually tip people in places like restaurants, airports, hotels, and hair salons. People who work in these places often get paid low wages. A tip shows that the customer is paid to be service. Continue. Okay, thank you so much, Vicente. Okay, sometimes it's hard to know how much to tip. The type of tip usually depends on the service, people such as the parking bell, but or parking bell horse, or usually get smaller tips. The tip for people such as a taxi drivers and servers is usually larger. Here are few guidelines for tipping on the United States. Okay, thank you so much. Maria del Carmen, you can read the guidelines. And then Patricia and Maris, you can finish the reading. Maria del Carmen, read taxi drivers. Taxi drivers, 15% of the bill, more if they help you with bad servers. 15 to 20 percent of the bill. There is no taking in fast food restaurants. Barbers or hairstylists, 15 percent of the bill. Airport porters or hotel bellhops, bellhops, one or two for carrying each suitcase. Hotel door attendant one or two for getting a taxi. Parking ballet, two for parking a car. Hotel miles, two to five per, per night. Okay, hotel maids, maids. 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 Cuando usted tiene una empleada de casa, empleada de casa, bueno, eh, que hace limpieza, lavan, plancha, le cocina, empleadas de casa se llaman maids. Maids. Okay. En esto se especifica que son hotel maids, que llegan, arreglan la cama, si necesita limpiar el baño, cambiar papel, hacer todos los arreglos mm -hmm. del cuarto. Those are hotel maids. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Patricia and Maris, you can continue with the reading. When you're not, not sure about how much to, to try to what tip, to, to tip, tip pardon, mm -hmm. what feels right, you don't have to tip for bad service and you can give tip a, a bigger tip for very good service remember to to no. behavior. behavior is more important 
the Germany Arbitrary Service Provis Provider 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 With respect Respect. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for helping me with this reading. Is there any question about the vocabulary or pronunciation? What is behavior, teacher? Behavior. Behavior. Comportamiento. Oh. Behavior. Comportamiento. Teacher. Mm -hmm. In what situation we can use that word behavior? Um, well, um, the behavior, for example, is the, is a noun and, um, and it's also a verb. So we can use, oh, uh, the behavior of my students is really good since they are very, uh, punctual. Okay. So I'm describing the behavior of my students, like a noun, right? That's the comportamiento Thank de mi atleta. You, bueno. <laughs> Thank yes. you very much. Uh -huh. Thank and you, also, teacher. <laughs> that is like comportamiento. Pero también se puede usar a alguien como decirle, comportate. Entonces, also, behave. Comportese. Behave. behave. Estate quieto. Behave. Comportese. Uh -huh. Teacher. Okay, this is a nice tip. Thank uh -huh. you, teacher. <laughs> Face <laughs> con con el behave. <laughs> okay, any other question? Teacher. La palabra slang. Uh, slang son como um, lenguaje informal. Uh -huh. okay. Gracias. O digamos como um, como um, caliche. Caliche, informal, también de ciertos a... Uh, um, sí, y no, no siempre son como... Um, uh, ¿Cómo decirle? No siempre son informales o callejeros, pero hay ciertas regiones que los usan de un modo, pero se pueden malentender en otras regiones. Entonces... Eh, Dialectos. Dialectos, uh -huh. ajá, Amorismo. dialectos. Amorismo. Eh, bueno, hace poco eh, una compañera tuvo un como mal, así como, um, digamos, mala experiencia porque um, mm, se le olvidó sí. quizás, no sé, pero uh, a veces es como que de repente todos decían, I feel you, como por decir, te entiendo. Te entiendo. Te entiendo, entonces, I feel you, I feel you. Entonces, ella le dijo así a un cliente y se quedó como que como que no lo tomó a bien ajá sin ah. embargo sí hay regiones donde malinterpretación se puede malinterpretar entonces sí um, con esos con los slangs hay que tener mucho cuidado a veces ah. porque puede que uh, en otras regiones no lo comprendan o no lo tomen de la misma manera que en otras entonces sí se conoce como como ya dijo el compañero verdad es como un lenguaje popular o, o pero es de ciertas regiones. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Esos son los slangs. Slang. Gracias. Any other Thank question? You. You're yeah. welcome. Uh -huh. I have a question. The yes. word, the word, tof o tof. Do. 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 Uh -huh. Do. Uh -huh. Okay. Eso significa aunque. Remember, though your behavior is more important is um, than your money. Perhaps Always treat dinero. service providers with respect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any no. other question? Teacher, and the meaning of guidelines? Guidelines is a set of rules. Se refiere a un set de reglas. Es como la, la, la guía, las guías, las directrices. Las directrices, guidelines. Teacher, se puede tomar como un lineamiento. Lineamiento o directrices. Ajá, exacto. Any other question? Sacamos bastantito vocabulario de esta reading, ¿verdad? <laughs> Sí, no hemos hablado del tip. Ah, uh, tip. 
la propina. No, a la, ajá, de lo que hace cada, cada uno de los de la pintura. Oh, El chef, yeah. waiter, waitress. Everybody likes tips. Everybody. <laughs> of course. Of course we like. Uh, yes, I, I think that the first one is the bellhop. El bellhop bell es el botón, es el botón uh -huh. es el que le ayuda con las maletas y todo. En los hoteles he oído que dicen bellboy. A uh, bellboy is, is, is also used. Uh -huh. Bellboy yeah, or bellhop. You can have the same in your bellboy. Mm -hmm. It's bell the same boy. thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Parking ballet. Ba Parking. What? Do you pronounce ballets? Parking ballets. Parking ballets, uh huh. Ballets, uh huh. They receive tip. Yes, uh huh. In some cases, I guess. In some cases, in other, the people treat bad. Uh, yes, uh huh. And they check they... first the car if, if they didn't damage when they were parking. <laughs> <laughs> like... Or maybe when they stall. Uh, or check first the inside the car if, if everything is okay not, there, if everything is complete. Where is mm -hmm. my car? Mm -hmm. And I think that especially in the, well, now I think people is, is, is again using the bullet parking, but I think it's a not, not really convenient to let uh, anybody to get into your car. So. Um, but it depends on each person, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, good. Any other questions? Yes, it's, it's really important. And they, I think, well, basically, I know that you can develop the, the reading exercise perfectly. Um, but the important thing is that we are uh, learning more vocabulary and about pronunciation as well. So in this one, it's like a comprehension of the, well, and this is the vocabulary exercise, you see? So we have to find the words in italics in the article and the meaning of each word. I remember that we heard and we read the word wages. What does it mean? Is the regular pay for a job or tips received for a job? What is ways? Do you remember in which part of the reading is that word? Ways. Salarios. Uh-huh, that's correct. So what would be the, the, the definition? Number one, wages, what would be the definition? Would that be regular think, pay for a job or tips? I, I guess mm -hmm. regular pay. Yes. regular pay uh-huh so regular in this place. we should yeah. yes we should check yes that in this one. Place, i think it's regular pay too uh-huh we check this one is regular pay for a job now number two pleased happy, happy. yes happy happy, happy. happy. Satisfied. happy or satisfied now, depend on? Change according to. Uh-huh, change, change according, according to. to. Now, behavior, we define that word. What is behavior? Is that a way a of way acting of or acting. a way of feeling? Correct. The first one. A way the first of, one. The first one. A way of acting. Excellent, a way of acting. Now, treat, is that ignore? or act toward? I guess the second. Uh, that is correct. Toward. Act toward. What is treat, teacher? Uh, treat, it's like, um, we can say this tratar. Tratar. Como un trato. Uh, el trato. Or, or como uh -huh. de hacer un trato de algo. Um, no. Mm, no. No, for when, example. When you tratar say... a las personas. Uh -huh. when, when you say in, oh, uh, okay, okay. in Halloween, trick or trick or trap? Ah, the is trick the, or... Is this word, trick? Uh, yes, uh, but in that, in, in that context, it's, it's, it's un trato. Uh-huh. Yeah. Trick with Pero, respect. 
uh, treat with respect. Ajá, en esta, por ejemplo, aquí, donde estaba la, la, en el contexto esa palabra, treat, ay, with respect. With respect. Ahí Tratar arriba. con respeto. Tratar con respeto, ajá. Y también treat puede ser hacer un trato, ¿verdad? Un, un deal, ¿ya? Ajá. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Okay, and the last one, respect, is courtesy or rudeness? Courtesy. 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 Yes, that is correct. That should be courtesy, the definition for that one. All right, and then we have this other exercise. Let me clear all this. This is check the statements that describe, that describe appropriate tipping behavior for the other items, what is acceptable? For example, if you your your haircut cost forty dollars, you loved it. You you tip the stylist three dollars. So mm. it cost forty three. Uh huh. So um, but it has to do with this one. So. Barbers or hairstylists is like the 15% of the bill. So is it correct to tip $3 of uh, 40? What would be like the 15% of $40? Let's do my- It's not correct. It's, it's not okay. How much would you tip if 15% if, uh, of $40? How much would that be? Um, I don't know. Five dollars, seven, seven, seven or eight, maybe. Oh, wow, Ten five percent or ten percent. Okay, I don't know. In it's some six, places, six dollars, the tip are in, in the bill. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, but yes, oh this God. is hmm? this okay. is expensive for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but, but I think, yes, in, in the United States, it's like that. It's, it's kind uh -huh. of expensive. I think that it's like $30 or $40 uh, on men's haircuts. Yes, it's, it's really expensive. Okay, so uh, I think that would be it for today. The idea is for this. You can do this exercise, but yes, it's like you have to be doing the maths. If it is appropriate according to this uh, behavior in the tips, you check it. If it is not okay, you leave it in blank. Uh, that's whenever you have time, you can work on that. Okay. 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 So I think that that was the last part of that section three. So tomorrow we will be working in section four, doing comparatives and superlatives. So thank you for your participation and for being here on time. Okay. I hope that you sleep well and see you tomorrow. Thank mm. you. Good night. Thank you, teacher. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Bye. So pleasure with you. Stay with you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, Daniel.